And uh, our next presenter uh, is Ekaterina uh, Asadova from uh, All Russia State Library for Foreign Literature. <clears throat> uh, and her topic will be Japanese language collection of literature in the All Russia State Library for Foreign Literature, please. Uh, so, Uh, dear friends, first of all, I wanted to thank the board of uh, the European Association of Japanese Resource Specialists for the amazing opportunity to participate uh, in today's uh, uh, conference. I sincerely hope that this week and uh, this conference will help to further improve international cooperation network in the field of Japanese resources conservation research. Uh, so, I will introduce myself for once again. My name is Asadova Yekaterina. Uh, I have been working in the Margarita Rudomina All Russia State Library for Foreign Literature, which is a federal library, one of the six federal libraries in Russia, uh, for almost four years. Uh, through these years, I have been supervising the library's Japanese books, uh, serial and periodical publications collection, working as both uh, an acquisition librarian and a cataloger. It was a very hard task because when I came to the library, its Eastern collection laid untouched in almost static state for a very long time. Uh, so today I would like to share with you my report about the current state of the Japanese language collection in the uh, Library for Foreign Literature. Uh, it is called Inastranka sometimes, the foreigner. Uh, about the work I try to do and uh, some major problems uh, we are facing uh, today. So first, let me give you some brief historical background of the, uh, uh, of the library and its Oriental Literature Department. Mm. Ah. Uh, first, this year is especially important for my organization because it's our 100th anniversary as the history of the library for foreign literature dates back to the 1920s, when in the October of 1921, uh, the library was founded as an independent institution. At that moment, the library had only 100 books and five people as staff members. In 1922, the library opened its doors to readers. The current building, which you can see on the photo, uh, was built in 1965. By that moment, the library had more than 4 million books and more than 300 staff members. At one point, there were 700 people working in the library, but that amount has decreased with time. Um, so, in 1949, the LFL starts to gather first Eastern books in Chinese, laying the foundation for the future Department of Oriental Languages. Uh, in 1955, the Department of Oriental Literature has been created. Uh, I'm still trying to find out when the first Japanese books uh, started to appear in the library and what were they, but this search is complicated due to the fact that all records of the incoming documents are kept in handwritten books at the doc document registration sector. So I do not always uh, have an access to the record books and it takes a lot of time uh, because the search is operated manually. Uh, still, my colleagues managed to find an article in the published materials of the 30th International Congress on Historiography and Soul Studies of Asia and Africa um, by Karina Genrichovna uh, Maranjan, we, uh, who was already mentioned today. Um, uh, her article stated that in 1978, 1979, and 1981, uh, the Library for Foreign Literature has handed over a number of Japanese documents to the Institute of Oriental Manuscripts of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Uh, in total, the Institute has received 60 documents in 190 volumes of, the, of uh, Kokugaku and Kangaku studies. Uh, most of the books had handwritten inscriptions in German language with transliterated titles, authors, and other publishers' uh, imprints. The articles, uh, the author states that two of the books had stamps of Japan Institute. This German institution was founded in 1926 and uh, existed until 1945. Uh, and uh, Miss, um, well, uh, Maranjan, uh, 
uh, suggests that those books were a part of so-called war trophies, uh, books that were taken as compensation for the losses of uh, Russian libraries uh, during the war, the Second World War, of course. Uh, in, if this statement is true, then I can assume that the Japanese language books first appeared in the uh, Library for Foreign Literature book stack right after the World War II was over. Uh, in Soviet era, book acquisition process was very active. Uh, the library has gathered an extensive collection of the Japanese language documents, not only on humanities and social studies, but also on natural, formal and applied sciences. There was an international book exchange, constant book and serial publications, purchase and donations. The Department of Oriental Literature has its own working space in the reading hall, where specialists were engaged in cataloging, acquisition, research, reference, and other information activities. Uh, in 1975, the library has changed its collection profile to the humanities and social sciences only. Uh, during that period, hundreds of Japanese books on mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, astronomy, and other subjects were donated and handed over to other Moscow libraries according to their uh, profiles. Uh, these changes were partially due to space constraints of the book stack. Uh, nevertheless, the Japanese book acquisition and bibliographing uh, continued. In 1944, uh, 84, I'm sorry, uh, the Department of Oriental Literature was disbanded and closed. Uh, reason for this decision are very vague. Uh, however, this was not the end of the Japanese collection acquisition. Uh, this conclusion is based on the analysis of the codes assigned to the books uh, in the book stack. First two digits of the coding system stand for a year in which a book was registered in the library. I assume that the book acquiring process was still very active in 1980s, uh, judging by the amount of books with the corresponding codes. Uh, the 1990s became a time of hardship for the whole country and for the library in particular. The acquisition rate was severely damaged as the library did not have the money to purchase books. Uh, there was not even enough money to pay salaries. Uh, thus, starting from the 90s, massive gaps began to form in the in Japanese literature collection. Uh, nevertheless, in 1994, the sector of Oriental literature has been opened again, now as part of the Department of Acquisitions. However, it had much less staff members and reduced book acquisition rate. Most of them were a part of gifts and international book exchange. Uh, most of the books, I mean not the staff members. Uh, in 2000, but in 2013, the sector of Oriental literature has been now permanently disbanded and closed. In 2016, the Department of International Book Exchange had also been disbanded and closed. And after that, Japanese book acquisition existed mostly through readers' gifts. Serial and periodical publications continued to flow into the LFL as gifts thanks to the connections with Japanese organizations uh, that were formed during the Department of uh, International Book Exchange existence, uh, for which we are immensely grateful. Um, so, the Library for Foreign Literature has an extensive collection of books, uh, serial and periodical publications in 144 foreign languages, 55 of which are Oriental languages. The data are presented based on the analysis of the general alphabetical catalog of the Library for Foreign Literature. Um, so the largest, now you can see on the screen, you can see uh, the largest document collection clusters, which are Arabic, Mongolian language, Indian languages and Chinese languages. Uh, when I came to the library, I was sure that the Chinese collection would be the largest. However, it turned out that the, it's actually the Japanese literature collection, which is the largest one. Um, uh, so these data are given as of June the 1st, uh, 2021. So let us start our review of the collection. I would like to emphasize that the collection analysis is still in progress. So today's data will contain the information that I have been able to collect so far. 
Uh, first, the main idea of the library uh, was to collect new and relevant fiction and scientific literature. Therefore, the collection of Japanese literature is mainly represented by contemporary publications of the 20th century. All literature published before the uh, 1890s as a rule goes to the Center for the Rare Books and Collections, which operates separately from my department. However, their relatively small collection of Japanese manuscripts is still not fully represented in the online uh, online uh, public access catalog, so its analysis is yet to come. Uh, so, yeah, uh, fiction collection can be divided in uh, three groups, Japanese fiction, Russian fiction uh, translated to Japanese, and other countries fiction translated to Japanese. Uh, first group consists of multiple Zenshu, Zenshu and Shu, and uh, lifetime editions of various classic novelists and essays. Uh, on the screen you can see uh, well, uh, a little list of uh, <laughs> the basic names. Um, they're, they're, uh, these authors' uh, uh, works are also presented as part of the larger series, uh, like uh, Gendai Nihon Bungaku Zenshu, which was printed by Chikuma Shobo in 1950s, Nihon Gendai Bungaku Zenshu by Kodansha, printed in 1960s, and uh, Showa Bungaku Zenshu by Kataka Kadokawa Shoten, which were also printed in 1950s. Um, Poets are represented by uh, multiple kashu, shishu, kushu of Minamoto no Sanetomo, Basho, Kyorai, Ryokan, Kobayashi, Sai, Ihara, Saikaku, uh, and many other poets uh, of Japan. There are also several editions of Manyoshu, Kokin Wakashu, and other uh, Wakashu, Renkashu, Haikaishu. Uh, most of them are, uh, are complemented with the uh, uh, Japanese prominent uh, literary critics uh, and uh, their comments. Uh, so Japanese state is represented by several gikyokushu, uh, yokyokushu, uh, kyogenshu, and so on, and compilations by Japanese dramatists. Uh, Bunkobon editions are also represented uh, in uh, various series, like Shincho Bunko, Kadokawa Bunko, Iwanami Bunko, and other prominent series of Bunko. Uh, cotton literature is also represented through, through several series, for example, Kanyaku uh, Nihon no Koten. Collections of Japanese literature awards winners are represented in several collections also. However, award, uh, awards winners of, uh, since 90s uh, are severely underrepresented due to the reasons stated previously. Um, so second group is also quite diverse. It contains Japanese translations of most prominent classical Russian writers, uh, Dostoevsky, Chekhov, Tolstoy, Pushkin, Gorky, Gogol, uh, and others. Of course, uh, there are many editions of Soviet era writers and poets uh, like Mayakovsky, Gaidar, Bianchi, etc. Uh, the collections of Russian and Soviet science fiction writers should be mentioned separately. Uh, there are writers like uh, Belayev, Green, Yefremov, Strugatsky brothers, and many others. Um, uh, the third group is the most hard to briefly describe because it contains Japanese translations of various foreign literature, Chinese, British, American, Indian, French, German, etc. Uh, there are several collections and series. Uh, one of the most noticeable one is Toyo Bunko series, which was printed by Hei Bonsha in 1970s. It has Japanese translations of fiction, essays, travel journals, and some notes connected to the East in general and Japan in particular. Um, uh -huh. Books on literary criticism and studies of literature can also be attributed to this part of the collection, which is centered on fiction. Uh, there are compilations and monographies about Japanese and non-Japanese, especially Russian fiction, in general about authors, literary movements, and history of literature. Books by Japanese and Russian literary cri critics exist in the collection. Uh, children literature is also represented in great quantity. There are collections of Japanese children writers like Watanabe Shigeo, Gomitaro, Katayama Ken, uh, various countries, fairy tales and legends, translations of Western children's literature. Some of them touch hard topics of war. 
uh, a number of children's books are focused on Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings and war in general. The collections of children's educational literature consists of encyclopedias and textbooks on various subjects like astronomy, physics, biology, history. Uh, there are also Japanese language textbooks uh, collection. For example, Ah, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it is a series of reading books for primary school students printed in 1920s, uh, from 1920s to 1930s uh, by Minister of Education, Mombosho. Um, uh, speaking about non-fiction literature, it is important to remember about the period in which the main body of the collection was formed. Soviet era has determined the main focus of the acquisition by subjects. Uh, first of all, it was economics, politics, industry theory, law and social studies. Uh, so uh, today I will describe uh, the most, uh, the largest ones. Uh, so economics is one of the largest clusters in the library. It has a vast amount of books about Japanese economy in general and it uh, and at different periods of time, like uh, most of them are centered about Showa period. Uh, a lot of books provide analysis of the Japanese economy compared to the Western countries and analysis of Japan's role in the world, uh, world economy processes. Uh, there are a lot of books providing Japanese economist analysis of Marxism, so socialism, capitalism and other economical systems. Uh, politics is another large cluster which shares general composition of the collection with the economy cluster. Uh, it represents books on Japan's domestic and foreign policy, Japan's role in the international arena. Uh, materials on the Communist Party of Japan, its history and development can be distinguished, uh, but materials on other political parties uh, are also in the collections. Uh, some books are biographies, autobiographies, collections of essays of major Japanese politicians, like prime ministers, party leaders, etc. Uh, the third large cluster is law. Uh, readers can find information on all aspects of Japanese law, criminal, procedural, constitutional, civil, etc. Uh, some of the materials describe the issues of workers' uh, rights in Japan. Law compilations are also represented. Two of the most notable are series of Genko Horei Shuran and Genko Kosei Hokisoran, printed before the World War II, uh, which apparently made a long way to our library, considering signs and stamps of many organizations they went through. Uh, so history cluster is presented mainly by materials on Japan history in 19th and 20th century, most notably the books about Pacific War and published diaries of former soldiers. Materials about periods before Edo Jedi is somewhat underrepresented. Uh, nevertheless, there are two valuable collections of uh, archive materials and documents published by to Tokyo University. It was also mentioned today, uh, like uh, Dai Nihon Komonjo, which we have in 173 volumes, and Dai Nihon Shiryo uh, in uh, 312 uh, volumes. There is also fa a facsimile edition of Dai Nihon, uh, Dai Nihon Shi in 17 volumes printed in 1928. Art cluster consists of um, art albums on classical and modern, and modern Japanese and foreign art. One of the oldest art albums of the collection was printed in 1908, uh, Wakan Megasen. Uh, there's also a collection of Japanese vocabularies, encyclopedias, and there are other referential material like uh, Otsuki Fumihiko Genkai and Dai Genkai uh, uh, and uh, uh, Dani Honja Kazensho and other uh, notable, uh, notable encyclopedias and vocabularies. So serial and periodical publications may be divided in two groups. First one is represented by various academic journals, which you can see, the list of which uh, you can see uh, uh, on the screen. And uh, uh, famous literary journals like Shincho, Bungakukai, Gonzo, Bungei, etc. So most of the books cannot be borrowed home by readers due to their old age, importance to the library's collection, rarity in Russia, uh, and only sm a small segment of books are available uh, to borrow. Uh, so, the main challenges and development potential. Currently, the collection is facing a number of specific problems that we are trying to solve. 
uh, so loss of the professional continuity. When I came to the library, there was only one person who worked in the last oriental literature sector, my colleague, a Chinese literature cataloger who is almost 80 years old. She provided me with some valuable information, but apart from uh, her, there were no one to ask or to consult with. There were no previous specialists, notes, no guidelines, no algorithm of how to work with the collection, no statistics or previously made descriptions of the collection. Um, so uh, right now I'm engaged in multiple activities and can, that can possibly alleviate the situation for those who will come after me. Uh, this includes the research of the collection's history, further analysis of the collection and creation of the new guidelines. Uh, so slow acquisition rates. Uh, in 2020, the library made the first purchase of 72 books in 20 years. However, since then, there were no further acquisition due to the lack of federal funding and the reluctance of the library's book uh, vendors to take on the Eastern book market. Uh, which deprives the collection of fresh publications, creating new gaps. Uh, this particular issue is the most complicated. A reactivation of the international book exchange is almost impossible at the moment. In addition, federal laws restrict cooperation with small vendors who specialize only on Japan's uh, book market. Uh, so taking part in events like uh, this conference may help to make new contacts and to exchange the experience with the colleagues from other libraries from all over the world. And collection invisibility. As was stated in the abstracts, the collection is mostly unknown for the Japanese resource specialists, students and other readers, gr reader groups in Russia. Potential readers go directly to the Japan's Foundation Reading Hall, which is placed on the first floor of our building with their own collection of 12,000 books. Low demand of the collection leads to, the low, uh, leads to low interest in its development, and that consequently worsens the problem in, even more. This one is the most important at the moment. Retrospective conversion of the books is an active progress. Each month uh, adds at least 150 new books of the collection to the online catalog, making the collection much easier to access. Um, and of course, we're trying to promote our Japanese collection through the library's events, conferences, and through the social media. Uh, so this is all I wanted to say today. Uh, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ekaterina, for your wonderful uh, presentation of the uh, of your library and uh, Japanese collection. So, please, uh, do we have any questions, for the presenter, or maybe some of our online attendants have any questions to Ekaterina? Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, if uh, we have no, uh, at the moment, uh, I'll make one question. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you mentioned that uh, although uh, the most part of your books uh, were purchased during the mm -hmm. uh, after World War II period, yes. uh, you mentioned that uh, there are still uh, some books of the pre-war uh, period, and uh, do you know the sources of acquisitions of that pre-war uh, uh, books of Shova and... Uh, um, earlier books? Uh, well, exactly. I'm not really sure where uh, those books were coming from. Um, according to the register books, uh, most of the books were, um, uh, were given by anonymous donations. So it's even uh, impossible uh, to discover the sources of acquisition of those books uh, right now. But maybe sometime <laughs> I will uh, find out those sources. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, uh, well, uh, we have one yeah. more question. Hello. When it comes to donations, um, do you have enough space to have all the donations? And uh, do you have a choice? Can you decline a donation? Uh, yes, uh, all the donations. Uh, first, they sh um, uh, so acquisition, li uh, acquisition librarians first uh, look through the book and decide if it's uh, uh, well, if it can be added to our collection, uh, whether it's uh, uh, well, uh, whether it's um, well, according to our profile, because we uh, go only for uh, humanities uh, books uh, in our book stack. Yeah, well, yes. Oh, 
Thank you for your presentation. I have only one question. Uh, maybe I have missed this information. Your uh, collection contains just books, not iconography materials. Oh, sorry, what? Does your collection contain iconography materials, uh, for example, engravings, um, pictures, or so on? Uh, almost all of the collection are books and periodical publications. So uh, there were some xylographies, uh, but they are uh, in the uh, rare books department. So I don't have access to this part of the collection right now, but uh, its research will, uh, is yet to come. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. so. And we have uh, one more question from Professor Van de Valle, uh, who is online. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your presentation. It's just a very you know, minimal question. Um, what is the evolution of your readership in recent years and what kind of people come and use your, your, your books uh, and, and, and all the materials in general? And second, um, if you have, uh, if, if some institution wants to make a donation to you, especially the institution is you know, remote <laughs> from your position, then of course, transportation and intake and so on does also cost some money. So do you have the means to, in that sense, receive uh, a donation that entails extra costs? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the question because the echo in this... Uh, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so the, you know, the development of your readership in, in recent years, what kind of readers do you get uh, in recent years and how many? Um, uh, I suppose physical, then of course, uh, to what extent uh, is, is other access, uh, online access possible? That's the uh, first question. Second one is uh, the means to accept uh, and take in uh, donations because a donation is, is basically for free, but it does entail costs. I mean, you have transportation and so on. Uh, so how, how about the, these aspects of the donation? Mm -hmm. uh, so for the first uh, question, uh, online access is very limited to just uh, several uh, books in our collection. Uh, this is due to the most of the books being of uh, 20th century, so not all of them uh, uh, has an uh, expired or like authority laws or how, how, how does it called? Um, yeah, so they cannot be uh, uh, put in online uh, access. Uh, and for the second question, it's quite, well, interesting because, uh, well, right now, as acquisi acquisition is uh, almost non-existent, so I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't face uh, such situations. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you're, ex uh, you're, ex uh, you're like uh, explaining. Yeah. So thank you for your question. Okay. Fine. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, yeah. for your questions. And uh, thank so, you. Well, yeah. Well, the initial report was meant to be much longer, <laughs> but uh, we, well, in 25 minutes, it's, Im well, yes. it's impossible <laughs> to describe all the. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you.